Let's face it, no one is exempt from the marketing game, not even psychotherapists. So, buyer beware. Hey everybody, my name is Leah Benson and I'm a licensed body-based psychotherapist, coach, and psychedelic guide in Tampa Bay. And today, I'm gonna explain my view on how we got to the point where therapists are out there explaining outdated pseudoscience to legitimize and market what they sell. Let me begin by admitting that I too was under the spell of a bunch of outdated pseudoscience for a while. I had completed my required training and my own 10-year psychoanalysis. And I was out there in the wilds of private practice working to acquire clients without being part of an insurance company network. I needed to, let's be honest, I needed to sell myself, and I do mean myself, because in the work I do, I am my instrument. And even though what makes me good at what I do is the 10-year psychoanalysis I had, the years of case consultation with seasoned psychoanalysts that I did, and the ongoing personal work I still do on a regular basis, that's not a good sales pitch, or at least it wasn't at the time I started selling my services. Especially when the kind of therapy I do was, and often still is, the butt of nearly every therapy joke out there. See, I do psychodynamic psychotherapy, which is generally considered a long-term therapy, even if it doesn't always last 10 years like mine did. And long-term psychotherapy fell out of favor starting in the 1970s when cognitive behavioral therapy got popular. And cognitive behavioral, or CBT, got popular because it was evidence-based, which means, like in any scientific study, there's a protocol written in an instruction manual that is followed to a T and can be repeated by anybody. It doesn't take a seasoned professional with a lot of experience to do it. And it's quick. It only takes eight to 12 sessions to complete the protocol. And the problem is solved according to the studies that proved its efficacy. This is what evidence-based practice means. Instruction manual therapy that can be performed by any therapist. So anyway, it's more complicated than that, but that is the gist. And when this short form therapy was popularized and legitimized with scientific studies and science jargon, then as a therapist, to signal that you were any good, you had to tell everyone that you were providing evidence-based therapy. And the truth is, most therapists weren't doing protocols. They just claimed they were doing evidence-based treatment to market themselves, and they still do. Fast forward from that origin story of evidence-based to this new millennium, when insurance companies and pharma run the show. And it's obvious to anyone marketing their private practice that science is the way to sell your services. So there I was back in 2005, building my private psychodynamic psychotherapy practice, using a method that was well known anecdotally to be effective at changing people's lives without a way to signal to people that it was legitimate. And on top of it, this was right at the point when people were beginning to find their therapists through Google searches, meaning keywords, meaning Make sure you're saying things that will get you at the top of the rankings. I didn't want to say I did CBT when actually I didn't follow an instruction manual to help people because people are more complicated than that and it wasn't a symptom or two that people wanted to change. They wanted their lives to feel better and they couldn't figure out why they didn't. Enter my own seduction by the polyvagal theory and other outdated science. By 2009, 2010, I was deep in the throes of learning how to market, as well as deep into the awareness that many people on my couch doing this talking cure with me were not getting to the feeling parts of therapy that I knew were important. I started searching. 
and I ran across ideas like molecules of emotion, the biology of belief. And I even considered getting licensed as a massage therapist for some vague reason I don't really remember. And then I found the polyvagal theory, which gave me some science to hang my marketing on. And that was cool, but it still didn't give me a concrete way to bring the body into therapy because all the clinical application of the polyvagal theory certification courses didn't exist yet. So I kept searching and as luck would have it, bioenergetic analysis fell into my lap in 2013. Finally, I had found a therapy modality that would allow me to bring the body into therapy exactly as I had wanted to do for years. Best of all, it was an outgrowth of the psychoanalytic tradition I was already practiced in. So it was perfect. That was a good phase. I had the polyvagal theory to give me some scientific sounding marketing copy. And in the second year of training in bioenergetic analysis, the now very famous book, The Body Keeps the Score, came out by a Harvard guy who all at once legitimized body-based psychotherapy and destigmatized the idea of going to therapy. It was awesome. I was being trained in how to bring awareness of the body and its energetic processes into the work of the talking cure. And what I was doing was supported by science. Woohoo! <laughs> and then it all came crumbling down in 2020. While everyone else was discovering the body keeps the score book and jumping on board with polyvagal ideas during the pandemic lockdowns, I was smacking face first into information that undermined everything about that science. Much to my chagrin, it slowly dawned on me over the period of a year that there was no reconciling the new information about brain function I was learning with the outdated pseudoscience of the polyvagal idea and the rational, emotional, primitive brain ideas presented in The Body Keeps the Score and taught by the leading educators in the field that I'd been studying with. And man, was that a blow. <laughs> I mean, to realize I'd spent the better part of a decade marketing my services with the language of outdated pseudoscience? I felt like a real dope. And I also felt betrayed by the teachers in the field who had promoted that outdated pseudoscience even though it was well known in certain neuroscience circles to have been falsified for decades. And I felt desperate to tell everyone I knew in the body-based therapy world about it. <laughs> but guess what? They didn't want to hear it. In fact, a lot of them still don't want to. So now, when I have extra energy to spend. I make snarky comments on the social media profiles of people who know better, but are still promoting this stuff. And otherwise, I go about my business telling you guys about it. Because right now, almost no one else is. And it matters. Because the 21st century science of brain function is a better framework for understanding your mental health. It's a better way of understanding how therapy helps you and it empowers you in a way the old frameworks simply do not. In fact, in those frameworks, you are a victim. A victim to a primitive and emotional brain and to a body that's always betraying you, when in fact, none of this is true. To top it off, because of the 21st century understanding of how brains actually work, what we know is that what happens when you believe those ideas you are much more likely to remain a victim because that's what brains do. They look for evidence of their beliefs. So buyer beware. Your therapist may be helping you solidify bad beliefs. And if you don't want that, stay away from them and their outdated science. Find people who understand predictive processing or just find yourself a good old-fashioned, modern-day psychoanalyst. Because 
they don't usually talk about science at all. They just use a method that has been proven effective for 140 years that the 21st century science of brain function explains perfectly. And that's it for today, everybody. See you next time.